Today, I'm a mad mom because I've learned that the Biden administration's changes and revisions to Title IX will actually discard male and female distinctions in our school systems where boys can go into girls' restrooms and girls into boys and athletics, the line is not going to be drawn anymore. Everything will be changed and parents have no rights. If a parent doesn't agree with it, they'll call Child Protection Services on you, the mom and dad. We have got to live on guard. Today joining me is attorney Amanda Linhart. Let's get into it. We must stand up. There are answers. We declare a war on sadness, war on sadness, war on sadness, sadness, war on sadness. Self-made gods are nice things to have around until people actually start to need God. And that's what's happening in our culture. We need to do something. We need to say something. We need to stand up. Be bold and courageous. You've got to stay on guard. How in the world can we take something like Title IX that was put in place to protect any discrimination against females back in 1972? I was 10 years old. I know the whole women's lib thing was in movement then. And now they want to revise it where gender identity, uh, that is part of this whole Title IX revision. Right. And it changes everything. It changes everything. Well, the, the basis for Title IX was to protect primarily girls. Right. Females who uh, from discrimination from discrimination to have equal access to mm -hmm. um, educational opportunities and what they're doing is they're erasing women they're erasing girls absolutely it's absolutely where are the feminists where are the feminists <laughs> where are the feminists when they're erasing women's sports they're erasing uh, medals honors scholarships and we've already seen in Loudoun County Virginia the raping of a young woman by a male a biological male who claimed he was a female and then he went and did it in another school system what sense does this make uh, just the, the disregard, really, for the safety of girls. Um, what we have here is um, by the Biden administration, again, trying to circumvent the, the, the process of Congress in making laws. Right. How can they do that? Yeah. So he issues a, an executive order back in March mm -hmm. telling his agencies, this particular one would be the Department of Education, to promulgate rules that would... Um, allow sexual um, orientation, orientation identity. gender identity mm. to equate with sex. So Title IX was about sex. It wasn't about what sex I feel like I am. It was it was a, a legitimate classification. Right. Biology. Yes. 99.99% .99 of your biology is female. Right. My biology is female, and 99.99% .99 in a male is male biology. That's and right. yet they're trying to do away with all that. Right. right. And so Biden wanted them to do this, right? Come yes. back with some rules. Yes. So what they do is they, uh, the Department of Education comes up with rules to enforce federal laws. And so here they have issued rules and uh, regulations, which you'll find in the Code of Federal Regulations right now. If you go to the federalregister.gov, you will see this um, promulgated rule, and it does invite comment from the public. Um, although this is not a substitution for the lawmaking procedures that are set forth in our Constitution. Mm -mm. And so this has been challenged. It should um, be, absolutely. Yes, a federal district court in Tennessee declared uh, it un unconstitutional and that the, the government could not take action against these state schools that had things on their books that were contrary to this. So this was in Tennessee, so they stayed any government action. So the action being, it's the carrot. You want our money? Mm. Well, then you right. you abide, you bow at what our, right. our laws and your the state laws um, are just completely wiped out. Right. So states no longer have rights. The federal law will say basically, if you don't do what mm -hmm. we say, you don't go along with the new Title IX revisions, then you get no federal money. Yes. None of our tax dollars that we put out goes to the school systems, which they've already done with lunches, right? We right. saw that with the whole school lunch thing, yes. how they were penalizing schools if they didn't obey and do what the federal government. This sounds like the tyranny that our founding forefathers mm -hmm. never wanted us to have, which is why we 
have states' rights. Right. So this is crazy. I'm looking at the U.S. Department of Education. Uh, when uh, they, They're celebrating, of course, June 23rd was 50-year anniversary of Title IX, and they celebrated the anniversary of Title IX by giving us this crazy stuff. And one of the things that uh, you were talking about earlier is that uh, the Biden administration wanted them to strengthen protections for LGBTQ plus students who face discrimination based on sexual orientation or gender identity and to protect LGBTQ plus students from discrimination based on those things and to take it further into all of the areas that would deal with the school. Now, I have a letter here of a, a lot of folks here in organizations, 27 organizations, 393,823 members who wrote to the Secretary of Education, uh, the Miguel Cardona, saying that in addition to eroding the process, the department appears to use Title IX as the legal authority for creating a new prohibition against discrimination on the basis of gender identity. Title IX has always explicitly permitted schools to separate males and females in certain contexts for athletic competition, bathrooms, locker rooms, and living quarters. But the revisions in to Title IX, the department in the department uh, the revisions it's going to announce that, that it's going to announce would discard the concept of male and female in Title IX that's enshrined there. It's so just crazy, like what you're saying. So sports teams, bathrooms, locker rooms would be open to anyone who, quote, identifies as female. And we've got kids that are identifying now as furries, as animals. Mm. And, you know, I say in fight like heaven, no wonder because we treat uh, pets better than we treat kids anymore. We're treating kids like animals. So when you start doing away with male and female and you start uh, just doing away with identity, I know kids, they play make-believe. You have children, I have mm -hmm. children. They play make-believe. What in the world if your child is pretending something and now you are wacky enough to, to go, oh, this is what their identity right. is. Right. You know, this is what they're, today they're a frog. So they identify as an animal. They're an amphibian. I'm going to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, tell my school that my child's an amphibian. What craziness. But the scarier part for me, Amanda, is that as we've talked about in Fight Like Heaven, they have curriculums gender-bred curriculum, unicorn curriculum that are pushing kids to actually explore these identities. Instead of teaching reading and writing arithmetic, they're getting kids to explore these identities. And then teachers are molding and actually planting these seeds and watering them and helping kids to identify as different things. And then if moms and dads find out that their child has changed their pronouns and changed their identity and changed their name, this Title IX, these revisions would actually put parents in a position to have their children taken away from them because they don't go along. Uh, that's what Title IX revisions would do, wouldn't it? Yes, it's it like would. Crazy. And I think the, the the one of the key, most disturbing parts of this is it is being put on children at such a young age. Yes. Developmental so, age. Totally. Well, yes. Kindergartners. Yes. Um, being uh, read a book about, you know, what is sex? It is something that is assigned to you and babies can't talk, so they have to rely on their caretakers and these are the other labels that you should have. And I think the, the one thing that we need to, to look at, we say LGBTQ, did, did you ever think that was gonna roll off of your tongue like it does now? No. It, rep, every letter represents a sexuality. It's mm -hmm. not, um, it, it's about sex and they're talking to, to kindergartners mm -hmm. about that. And so you're and if you break down those letters, they're not very pleasant things. No. Even when you tell what they are, right. they're like, what? Right. Who would have ever thought? And there's a reason they're put in letters. Yes, yeah, so that you can dissociate from the meaning. Right. Uh, what is actually happening sexually with these kids, what is actually sexually happening. And this is the kind of stuff they're pushing on little kids. Little kids. Little kids. We see it everywhere. Our malls filled with uh, Pride Month, filled with all of these things. Every uh, celebrity culture is filled with this. And parents and moms and dads that are stepping up to say, no, you're not putting CRT in our curriculum. You're not putting LGBTQ agendas. They're being called the terrorists. Yes. They're being called. So if they're already calling parents terrorists, what is going to happen when they actually have uh, this Title IX revision, is there anything we can do? Do you think legally, is this gonna stand up to muster? Uh, of course, everything we else, else we thought was was illegal is still being done, right? Yes, um, it should. Like like I mentioned, there's a federal court in, in Tennessee who said that this is this is not comport with the Constitution, this is a violation of the 10th Amendment, um, but that's one court. But the, the beauty is we, the people, 
have the ability and the power to influence our lawmakers. So um, the attorney generals uh, for the state of Tennessee was the one that brought that action. So you need to put pressure on your attorney generals. Yes. You need to to call your governors you, and, and make your voice known. We are the people and they do uh, listen to us oh, in, in Fight Like Heaven. And, and you've mentioned uh, lawmakers say, hey, we're not as impressed with lobbyists. It's the moms and the grandmas, those, mm -hmm. those mama bears who they know will fight for their children. Yes. So we just can't stand by and let this happen. We cannot. And I would flood the Department of Education, yes. the Biden administration, uh, Miguel Cardone. I would, I would flood them with calls, with information, with letters saying we will not support. If you're a Democrat, especially, please let the yes. Democrats know you are done with their party. I mean, we have a midterm coming up. This is the time to put the pressure on. And, you know, even in Ohio, and I know schools across the nation, places that would be considered more conservative states actually still on the first day of school identified kids' pronouns. We're seeing it now in stores we go into. Nordstrom, uh, they have tags and their names, they're identifying pronouns pronouns are below their names. These are things that are, they're trying to make it so mainstream. Uh, we keep thinking as believers that we will uh, give in to these things. And if we just give them an inch, then they'll be happy. We've seen this happen, everything from back years, years ago uh, with homosexuality. And now we see it does not stop, does it? No. Satan has an agenda and it is a perverted agenda to destroy and take your children. He's trying to do that. And if you and I, as believers, do not stand up and draw the line and say, no, not on my watch. You are not taking my children. If we don't pull our kids out of their public education system, which is no longer about reading, writing, and arithmetic, but driving social agendas and enslaving kids so they can make a million dollars on each child for them to transition, this is hideous. They've done this with abortion. They've done this with all kinds of other things to harm kids, mental health, ADD, and all kinds of other labels and chemical imbalances that doesn't even exist in, a in any kind of brain uh, activity study or anything else, if they've done this all these years and we see the fallout from that now, Amanda, we see it. I saw it in my generation. I saw it in my own life. What are these kids going to experience? What are their lives going to be like after their bodies have been mutilated at three, four, mm -hmm. five, seven years old? Their minds have been so confused, so confused. What is the future of these kids? I just can't even imagine anything but a suicide rate that just goes through the ceiling yes. uh, and mental hospitals everywhere. I don't know the breakdown of our uh, entire society to be animalistic. And this is Satan behind this. This is what Satan wants for people's lives. He wants to make a mockery of God's creation of male and female. He made them and told them to be fruitful and multiply. This whole LGBTQ agenda, it is heresy. It is a violation of God's word and it is to destroy people's sight their psychological, their mental outlook, most importantly, their spiritual and their physical bodies and sterilize them for life. This is hideous. We must speak up. Any yeah. final thoughts? I think where the enemy is attacking and always has is identity. Yes. And so if you think that you, your ancestors crawled out of a swamp, that um, you were uh, an accident or that you are an animal, no, you were created in the image of God and his likeness. If, if you think that you have no worth or that it's tied up in some sexual label, you'll, you'll, you'll never be able to get there. Um, that's right. But through the grace of God, we all can. And so that's yes. why we stand here to, um, to, to fight the lie. It's, it's a complete lie. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Satan, he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. It doesn't matter if it's a five-year-old. It doesn't matter. He doesn't play right. fair. So that's what we're here to do is to tell the truth. That's and parents right. have the ability. You know, you've talked about in your book that parents are lied to in these medical um, situations. Yes. They say, a nurse told me, she said, they tell the parents a live trans child is better than a dead child. 
So they're trying to make a parent think, oh no, I don't want my child to commit suicide. So they put fear in the parent because their child might be going through some difficulties. Everyone goes through difficulties. Yes. Everyone goes through times they're confused. That's part of puberty and development. And if you've got these evil doers who are planting these seeds in these kids, and that's what she told me, she was crying and she said, I look at their behavioral charts and there's demonic activity. They're seeing black uh, wisp and they're hearing voices and things telling them to cut themselves and to harm themselves. and to do things to their bodies. These are demonic influences. And so when you take them to a hospital, and these are children's hospitals across the nation that have been indoctrinated to do these things and doctors, and they are then saying to them, they're trapped in the wrong body. They've been labeled with the wrong identity. They need to transition to a new identity. And then she said, they'll send them to the trans clinic that is only run by trans, and they will push this agenda on these kids, give them puberty blockers, and give them drugs that are actual drugs that they gave to prisoners to, uh, in uh, Lubricon, all these, all these uh, seriously castrating them sexually, these drugs to castrate them and then turn around and physically castrate and change their bodies. This is hideous and sterilize them for life. When we know uh, 90 plus percent of those kids will change their mind down the road. I mean, kids are kids. Mm -hmm. When they play make believe, you don't say, oh, that's what you are. We need to guide them as parents. We need to guide them as leaders. And it needs to be now enough where parents say, that is not gonna happen on my watch. Pull your kids out of there. Let them hear from you. Let the Secretary of Education hear from you. Let the Biden administration hear from you. These are their agendas and they are demonic agendas. They are lies that will change our culture forever and destroy our nation. No culture has ever survived. No society has survived that got into sexual perversion, got away from yeah. family and marriage, the institution of male and female marrying and propagating and having children and having the family unit. I talk about in Fight Like Heaven that the family is where the most serious attack is. And the enemy knows if he can destroy a spiritual, he can destroy the family, he will destroy the nation. This is an attempt to destroy our nation, to go along with also what I talk about in the uh, uh, Fight Like Heaven, the New World Order the Great Reset, and to completely do away with nationalism and create a society they call a utopia, but it is definitely a dystopia. And there's all kinds of groups, they're standing up to this. However, I would say, uh, I've been involved in things before where there were study groups and people asking for feedback. They already had their minds made up. It was not something they were gonna change, but they still should hear an outcry from you and pull your kids out of this system. Uh, it's, it's hideous. It's already infiltrated. Uh, I do still think you can be on school boards and you can go and fight. You can fight for these other kids that your kids are gonna live mm -hmm. down the neighborhood from. Uh, they're gonna be in schools and from parents that don't even know what's going on with their kids. You can still fight, but you cannot let your children. This is the difference. So people go, well, are you hating people? No, we don't hate people. Are you not tolerant? Yes, we're tolerant of individuals that are adults making decisions what to do with their own lives. Mm -hmm. But when you start going and you start taking little children. Jesus said that if you harm one of these little ones and you cause them to stumble, you'd be better to have a millstone tied around your neck and thrown into a lake. And I just want to talk to churches that are trying to be tolerant. You are allowing at the sake of trying to quote, love somebody and invite them into your congregation. You're allowing the children in your congregation to be raped. Would you allow that? Would you sit by as a pastor and a leader saying, well, we just want to be you know, loving. Yes, we want to be loving, but truth is love. And the Bible is very clear in Romans 1 that people that practice these things will not enter the kingdom of God. So if you love them, pastors and leaders, you need to tell the truth. You need to not be afraid to hurt someone's feelings. Jesus met the woman at the well and he confronted her sin in love. He spoke to her. He spoke to what she was doing, that she'd been married five times and that she was living with a man. She, instead of being offended and all upset, she came to God and she was transformed in her life. Uh, she became an evangelist in her town. How can we get people to come into the kingdom of God and receive salvation if there's no conviction that their lifestyles are wrong? Churches, wake up. Churches, you've got to be bold. Jesus said, if you, you're lukewarm, I'll speak you, you out of my mouth. And I, I tell you, pastors, we will receive a greater judgment when we stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. If you were 
tolerant more than you were truthful about the word of God. There are people that will go to hell because of your uh, your, uh, your complicit uh, behavior, your uh, opening yourself up to this and tolerating this as a lifestyle that's acceptable. And so I just want to call you out on this because I love you too and I want you to repent. And I'm telling you, take a stand. Take a stand say, no more, you're not doing this to our children. We've got to live on guard. Today, there are things going on in the culture in all directions. I want to encourage you to get the book, Fight Like heaven. If you haven't already gotten it, it's a, a cultural guide to living on guard. It exposes many of the things we're talking about today, as well as the other areas the enemy has tried to invade. There's seven areas of influence. The enemy's tried to invade those. One of them is the rule of law that Amanda's talking about today. We have to get back to the constitution, the word of God, and the rule of law. Absolutely. Thanks for Absolutely. joining me. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Stay on guard. There are a lot of Christians who would tell you, a lot of leaders, a lot of pastors that would tell you, don't talk about certain things. In many ways, the church at large has been outwitted by Satan. We don't want to be silent about these things. We want to speak up. It takes courage. It takes boldness. But if we don't address and expose the deeds of darkness, then they take over. We must counter it. We must yep. know our enemy. We must know our adversary and we must know what his tactics are. We cannot be complacent anymore. You have influence. God has placed you in a sphere of influence. You are a soldier of the light. We need to be straightforward with the truth. Help us to be strong, God. Help us to do our part, Father, to be disciplined, to be ready, to be soldiers of light, soldiers of truth. God, help us to be on guard.